I was trying to figure out earlier in the week what to preach about this morning, having covered gifts of the God last week. And at some point, I made the halfway joke with Shay. I thought I was going to preach about not throwing the baby out with the wrapping paper. And the thought stuck more and more in my head. I did change the title a little bit. Don't throw out the gift with the wrapping paper. And the reality is we would never do that intentionally, would we? I think I know of it happening a time or two on accident or one portion of a gift, something small that was down in the bottom of the box with some of the stuffing paper or whatever. I didn't realize it was in there and it got tossed out and then somebody said, hey, did you find whatever the item was? And no, and there's the frantic search back through the trash to find the right bag, the right box, the right whatever to, to recover that. And, and part of the reason that this stuck in my mind as being a topic for this morning is though we would never intentionally throw a gift out like that. For so many, Christmas is over. Thoughts of Christ are over. The, the focus is already shifting to it's a new year. What are my resolutions going to be? How am I going to celebrate? How am I going to whatever? And it's because Christmas and maybe Easter are the times where they really think about Christ. And I want us to make sure that as we think about the gifts that God has given us, those that we talked about last week, the gift of Christ, the, the gift of our salvation, the gift of grace, the gift of the Holy Spirit, um, and, and so many other blessings and gifts that he provides us with. I, I want to make sure that, that we don't just end that when we end the holiday. As Mike prayed, we need to be glorifying God each day of our lives. It, it is a lifestyle that God calls us to, not just a, a couple of days of worship or a Sunday each week. <coughs> and so we need to make sure that we treasure the gift properly and not just let it go out with the holiday and the wrapping paper. Well, that thought of treasuring the gift properly brings me to part of what we, we hit on a little bit in Bible class. The passages in, in Luke chapter 2, uh, verse 19, and, and then down in Luke chapter 2, verse 51, where it talks about Mary treasuring these things in her heart. Uh, chapter 2, verse 19, was following the arrival of the shepherds. And it says, But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then again, after the scene that we looked at in Bible class with Simeon, verse 51, uh, he went down, uh, went down to Nazareth with them, uh, Excuse me, not after Simeon. This is the 12 year old Jesus in the temple. <laughs> and they had found him, and he had made the comment back to them in, in regard to their question Why did you do this to us? Didn't you know I must be at my father's house? And then in verse 51, he went down to Nazareth with them, was obedient to them, but his mother treasured all these things in her heart. Mary may not have understood all that was in store for her baby. We kind of talked about this a little bit in Bible class as well. But as God revealed more and more 
about the value of the gift he had given her, that he had given to the world. She was ready to absorb that value, to, to grab hold of it and to cling to it and, and to, to treasure it and to ponder and think, what all is God really accomplishing through this gift? My hope for us this morning is to realize that we need to be treasuring in our hearts and pondering the gifts of God in our lives on a very regular basis. Every day, God reveals more and more to us about how he's trying to bless us, about what he has done for us through Christ, uh, of the things that he's trying to accomplish in our lives, of uh, the value that he's trying to add. And we need to be ready to, to soak that in, to absorb that, and, and to, to allow that to become more and more valuable in our lives. But we've got to also realize that if left on its own, the heart will focus on the wrong things. Uh, we, we hear people talk all the time about, I, I just need to follow my heart. Well, if you leave the heart to decide what it wants to follow, the heart will follow a lot of different things. It'll lead you to a lot of places that ultimately you may decide, this is not really what I wanted. This is not really what I needed. This is, this is totally wrong for my life. And so the reality is we have to take control of the heart. We have to control its emotions. We have to control its desire. We have to focus what our heart's attention is to make sure that it treasures the right things. And so we start this morning with the question, what treasure do you seek? Mary was treasuring Christ. In essence, she was treasuring God, storing that up in, in, in her heart. What Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, <coughs> Matthew chapter 6, the beginning of verse 19, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Even as we talk about storing up treasures in heaven, our focus has got to be correct. I don't think Jesus is telling us our focus is to be seeking mansions, streets of gold, gates of pearl, things that we would define as treasure here on earth. That's not the true treasure of heaven. The, the true treasure of heaven is being in the presence of God, seeing him in all of his glory and, and, and knowing that I get to be there for eternity with him. It, it is being in the presence of Jesus Christ, my king, and knowing that I get to be there to worship and honor him. In essence, that's what Mary was doing. While her heart, and the way those passages are written, while that was here on earth, her heart was in heaven because she was valuing and treasuring the gifts of God. Much the same way that ours can be. Our, our heart can be valuing the gifts of heaven, uh, laying up treasures in heaven, focused on the things of God, and still be that that is here within us.
Christ is the source of all of the treasures that are worth seeking. That's a pretty big statement, isn't it? Christ is the source of all treasures worth seeking. All the ones worth storing up. Look with me, if you would, at Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, beginning verse 2, Paul writes to uh, the brethren at Colossae this message. My goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures and wisdom and knowledge. Uh, verse 4. Need to read. I'll stop my reading too soon. Um, I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine sounding arguments. For though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit and delight to see how dis disciplined you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. Paul is seeking, praying for, desiring that they know Christ more and more because Christ is the source of all wisdom and knowledge. He says it's all hidden in Christ. Now, when Paul says that it's hidden in Christ, he's not saying it's impossible to find. He's saying the only way to access it, the only way to find it, is to get there through Christ. You want to know how to have a good life? The answers are through Christ. How to have a, a good relationship? The answers are through Christ. You want to know how to deal with addictions? The answers are through Christ. You want to, to know how to gain real wisdom? The answers are through Christ. It doesn't matter what we start talking about. How to get to God. The answers are through Christ. He is the one who provides the treasures of our hearts. He is the one who, who provides the gifts that, that last for eternity. Seeking and treasuring Christ, though, has to be a continuous activity for us. Jesus told a couple of parables. He, he told a parable about a man who was on a piece of property and he found a treasure. And he rehid the treasure, went and gathered up every bit of money he could gather up, sold everything he had, got everything he could so he could go and buy that piece of property so he would then have the treasure. Well, the way the story is told, that's the end of the search. The other story, this guy is traveling and searching for a pearl of great value. And when he finds it, everything that he has so that he can get the pearl and his search is over. Well, both of those are referring to finding Christ. 
And in that regard, it is a find Christ. No need to keep looking for any other source of answers. That is the greatest value. That is the greatest treasure. But seeking and treasuring Christ is still a continuous activity. Learning more and more about Jesus. Learning more about how to apply the wisdom that he provides in my life. Learning more about uh, how to, to apply those things. It's not just, okay, I found the Bible, I found Jesus, it's over and done. It's let me study it. Let me search it. Let me comprehend it. Let me study it some more. Let me let me keep going in these things. It, it was never, as I said earlier, it was never intended for this to be something that we do at Christmas and at Easter, where two times a year, okay, let me let me pull the, all the reminders of Jesus out of the closet. No, it is intended to be each day of our lives. Continuing the reading in Colossians chapter 2, verse 6, Paul says, So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, Strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. So then just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him. The things that we treasure, we have a tendency to do one of two things with. Either we lock it away and hide it from the world out of fear of losing it and, and in the process never really enjoy it. Or we put it out on display and we look at it constantly. And it's a part of our lives. And, and, and we can't wait to show people, here's my greatest possession. Here's my greatest treasure. Here is, is what I, I think so highly of. Might be a little bit of an odd illustration. But my mind thinks of the cartoon character um, uh, Uncle Scrooge from DuckTales. You remember he had all that money. What was his favorite activity? I'm going to go to my vault and I'm going to dive and swim. They always show him swimming through all that money. That was his greatest possession. He wanted to be with it. He, he wanted to enjoy it. He, he wanted to, to hold it tight to himself. In essence, that's what Paul's saying we got to do with Christ. I don't find him one time and, and then say, okay, I found the treasure. Let me lock it away so that I never lose it, but I can't utilize it and enjoy it every day. Instead, God's intention is I wear it proudly. I, I put Christ on display for the world to see and say, this is where my heart is. This is where my treasure is. This is what is valuable to me. The, the guidelines that Jesus established, the way that he showed us how to live, that what he showed us was important in honoring God, serving others, figuring out how to love my enemies how to do things for people even when they despise me. These are the things that strengthen my faith. These are the things that I'm taught. 
These are the things that I am supposed to be overflowing with thankfulness about. These are the basis of my treasure laid up in heaven that cannot be destroyed. Paul says, so then just as you receive Christ, continue to live in him. The only way to continue to live in him is to make that a part of everyday life. It influences my speech. Put some control. We talked about last week, one of those gifts being self-discipline, that that. I, I get a little better control of my tongue. Whether that's talking about gossiping, whether that's talking about inappropriate language, inappropriate jokes, criticisms, improper judging, whatever the case may be. <laughs> it affects my decisions. What do I do with my money? What do I do with my time? How do I interact with people? What well, conversations, uh, yeah, I can have conversations about movies and whatever else with people, sports. Uh, it doesn't all have to be about Christ. But shouldn't in some way Christ sort of be a little bit of a seasoning to a lot of my conversations? Doesn't have to be only about him or specifically about him. But it needs to at least be a reflection of the values and the things that he puts in my life. So what treasure do we seek? Where where is our heart? Jesus, as we read, Jesus said, where your treasure is, there's your heart. What our heart focuses on is where we go. Do we allow it to run on its own? Or do I focus it on Christ? Do I bring that store up? where I can place my treasures and know they are leading me towards the ultimate reward of all, being in the presence of God. So that takes me back to our title as we wrap this up, no pun intended. Don't throw the gift out with the wrapping paper. It's December 26th. Christmas is over. We're headed to the new year. Take the gifts of God with you into that new year. Use them. Encourage them. Strengthen them in your life. Plan on making them a part of every day of your life this coming year in some way. Spend a moment of gratitude, of thankfulness, and communication and prayer with God each day for the gifts that he's given. And seek what Christ has to set before you. The lesson is yours. The gifts that God gives us are so great. We don't want to waste them. If that's been the case, you need to do something this morning to Make yourself right with God. Christ has done the hard part. He's done the part we couldn't do for ourselves. 
Our part is just saying, God, I need it. Forgive me. And trust in what Jesus tells us to do, to receive that. If we can assist you with that in some way this morning, let us know as we 